Hey guys, welcome to another video from Irish Ham Radio. I'm Dave, EI5 IMB, and today I'm going to talk about a wonderful event that took place earlier this week where the Athlone Community College made direct contact with astronaut Shannon Walker on the International Space Station with no small help from the wonderful engineering of the Shannon Basin Radio Club. So stay tuned. <laughs> So the call sign designation for the International Space Station in this event was OR4 ISS and the ground station call sign designation for the Athlone Community College was EI1 ISS. Students took turns at asking 20 questions to Shannon on the ISS uh, as it passed overhead. The video I'm going to show you is a combination of the live stream uh, that was shared on YouTube and given out by the IRTS on the IRTS website and uh, also of some of the footage that I took locally here on my Anytone 8878UV Plus which was tuned to the downlink frequency of the ISS. So some of the answers you'll see will come through on the live stream if I wasn't getting it here and then any of the answers that I was able to listen to which is about from question 6 uh, up to question 19 uh, you'll hear them through my own radio. So it's a bit of a combination of footage here. So look, I'm not going to say any more. Enjoy it. Echo India 1, India, Sierra, Sierra, over. EI1, ISS, this is OR4, ISS, you are very soft, over. Roger, roger. Th thank you. Good afternoon, Shannon. Thank you for calling at Lone Community College. Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. Are you ready for questions, please? Over. I am ready for questions. Over. Did you enjoy the launch into space? Over. Poison, I absolutely did enjoy the launch into space. It was a very exciting and thrilling ride. Over. Tell us something about the current experiments on the ISS. Over. You know, Tristan, that's a very good question. We're just now getting into the experiments. Um, we've got some interesting things going on with uh, fiber optics, and we've got some interesting things going on with looking at vibrations in, in drops of fluid. Over. What is your favorite area in the ISS? Over. Activities do you do in your spare time? Over. Activities in my spare time. You know, I don't actually have a lot of spare time. I would say mostly just before I go to bed, I call my husband and talk to him for a few minutes. Over. What is the most interesting thing you have seen on Earth from the space station? Over. of climate change, KC from space. Over. For sure. Well, evidence is very easy to see when we look down on all the glaciers that are disappearing. Over. How many years of training does it take to become an astronaut? Over. So it takes a lot of years to become an astronaut. It takes a minimum of two years when you're first selected before you're eligible for space flight. And then for my first space flight, it was three more years of training. Over. Where does the ISS get its energy from? Over. That's what we get our energy from the sun. We've got to keep solar arrays. Over. What happens if you're in a spacesuit and your nose becomes really itchy? Over. Sonia, it's just an unfortunate situation. You just, it's not a darn thing you can do about it. Over. When you return home, what will you miss most about the ISS? Over. overcome during training. Over. I would say the most difficult challenge was two things. One, learning the Russian language, and two, doing the training for uh, spacewalks. Over. When you first saw the Earth from space, what was your reaction? Over. Tristan, the Earth is 
absolutely overwhelming when you see it from the first time from space, especially the sunrises and sunsets. Over. Has something useful on Earth come from space experiments? Over. So there's a lot, been a lot of useful things coming from uh, space experiments, even going back to the Apollo days, starting with uh, miniaturizing batteries. And think what we've done with small batteries. Everything from cordless drills to the batteries in your cell phones. Over. Are your muscles weak when you return from microgravity? Over. gravity because we exercise every day and in fact on my last flight I was stronger when I came back than before I left. Over. If there was a man mission to Mars, would you consider going over? If there were a human mission to Mars, I would absolutely consider going. Over. Would it ever be feasible to travel to another solar system? Over. That distances are too far to uh, get anywhere in a lifetime. Over. How do you keep fit with the low gravity in space? Over. John, we exercise every day. We've got three exercise devices up here, a treadmill that we can run on an exercise bike, and then a machine that uh, lets us do the equivalent of lifting weights. Over. Does your sense of taste and smell change in space? Over. they believe because of the fluid shifts, uh, fluid going up into your head and giving your, you're giving you a stuffy nose. Over. While on the ISS, are you able to communicate with family? Over. Yes, while we're up here, we are able to communicate with family. We have email, we can make phone calls if the satellite hookups are right, and then but once a week we get a video of us with our family. Over. When did you decide you wanted to become an astronaut? Whether from a young age or did your interest develop at a later age? Over. I was decided I wanted to be an astronaut when I was four years old. That is when I saw uh, humans land on the moon. Over. Roger, Rogers. Shannon, thank you so much for that. We're all absolutely delighted here. We'd like to give you a very loud round of applause. Thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to talk to, to this school, our school here in Ireland. Grammy na mahagiv. So that's it, guys. I mean, uh, talk about a wonderful thing. I mean, as a fairly new ham, and even before I got licensed in August, like. Uh, I, it's one of the things I want to do is make direct contact. I mean, I, I want to get through the repeaters and all of that and APRS, uh, DGP through the ISS and through other AMSATs up there. But I mean, making direct contact, talking to an astronaut on the ISS is something special. And it's uh, for me anyway, I, and for I'm sure for a lot of other hands that are into that part of it, a part of the hobby, it's a, uh, you know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a bucket list item. So someday, if the stars all align, pardon the pun, that's what I'd love to do. But look at, you know, you have to say fair play to Shannon Basin Radio Club. I mean, you can, I can imagine the sort of, no matter what, I'm, I'm sure there's some pressure there to make sure that on the day it works. You know, you'd be double and triple and quadruple checking everything. I can really understand that. So like wonderful feat of engineering and it really went off so well and it's so well presented. Absolute hats off to you. Well done. And to the IRTS and the AR uh, ISS program. And everything for you know for this amateur radio on the international space station keeping it going like it's really wonderful so hats off to all of you guys so I, look i have nothing more to say i just wanted to sort of present that uh, with a little bit of mix of some of the local rf that i received here and uh, put it out there so other people can see it you know there's a few, there's a few videos of it out there now but um i think it's uh it's no harm i couldn't not share it out there with you guys so look that's it all for me so for now, until my next video, seven threes.